You know, I love about that song is that he's fighting our battles for us. I love that. Well, good morning. My name is Jerry. I want to say welcome to you this morning. I hope someone has made you feel welcome. If not, let me say welcome. I'm glad you're here. So, and I'm glad I'm here today. So, well, I've got a few announcements I want to make. Number one, if this is your first time with us, please take a moment, fill this card out and put it in the offering plate at the end of the service. I promise you we will not show up to your house. We will not come to your door. We just want to have a record of your attendance with us today, and we will send you some more information about us, but we will not show up your house, I promise. And so also, if you've been going here your whole life and you have some prayer requests, something you want the pastor to know about or someone in the church to pray for you about, on the back of the card, you can do that. Just put your prayer request in the back, put your name on the front, of course, and drop it in the offering plate at the end of the service. Two quick announcements. Number one, tonight is part two of the prayer boot camp. That's at five o'clock. Uh, if, you, if you came to that last week, you know that it was really great. If you didn't come you, and you, you're saying, well, I've already missed the first one, that's okay. Please come on to the second one. It's at 5 o'clock tonight. This is basic training for prayer warriors, tra- teaching us how to pray and what we're praying about. So amazing. It was really great last week. So if you missed it, please, please come tonight, 5 o'clock. It's here uh, in this room. And the second quick announcement is we are, the youth are going on a trip uh, in June. And so if you're, if you're here today and you're a, youth, a, pa, uh, excuse me, a parents of a youth, we have a $50 deposit that's due uh, by the end of this month. So March 1st is the deadline. So it's just $50 to secure your spot. Or maybe you, uh, you're here and you're like, you know what, I'd like to pay for a few people to go and help do that. If you'd like to do that, please talk to BJ and Katie. This church, is, uh, I've said this for years and years, I've never seen a church give be so giving and loving and helping people go. So we will have people that will need help. So if you want to sponsor somebody or a couple of people, please talk to BJ and Katie. We'd love for you to help us do that. So, but that's it. That's all the announcement today. Everyone stand up, please. Turn around, tell someone close to you, I'm glad to see you this morning.
verse next to you say, he is victorious over all my enemies. So I'm victorious over all my enemies. Hallelujah. God has already defeated your enemy. And we can stand with him. We can stand on the faith that he has given us everything that we need, everything that we could desire. We can look to him. We can seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, whatever your needs are today. Let's go to him in prayer for a moment. Lord God, we exalt the name of Jesus. We exalt the only name by which man can be saved. We exalt the name that is above all names, the King of kings, the conquering Savior, who has defeated death and hell and the grave, who has defeated our sin, went to the cross in my place to take my sin away. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah to Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you be glorified. Speak to us this morning. Have your way. Move among us. Move through us and in us and change us. We glorify you. We praise your name. We praise your name.
this morning. So good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Are you expecting something from God today? Are you expecting something from God today? No, Brother Jerry, we just came. No, are you expecting something from God today? I, I want to say a word about our, our prayer boot camp. Some have asked, uh, Brother Jerry, we missed last we, we missed the first session. Can we come this session and, and be all right? Yeah, we'll, we'll forgive you. You come on, and we will, we will start with you this week on the prayer boot camp. The prayer boot camp is, is basic training. Any of you has been around, around a, any military folks, you know that they went to boot camp, and that was basic training for soldiers. This is basic training for prayer warriors. Don't miss it. I believe that God will touch your life with this. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Mark, the gospel according to Mark. And we're going to look in chapter 1. We're, we're starting a new series this morning. We're calling it The Kingdom. The Kingdom. This is something that is so needed, I believe, in the church today. And uh, I, told, I told someone a while ago, uh, put your seatbelt on, because this is, this is really uh, groundbreaking, actually, in, the, in Christians' lives. Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. When you get that opening, stand it with me, please, as we read through verse 15. Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 9. If you're ready for the word of God, say amen. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Brother Johnny, lead us in prayer, please.
Yes, that's right. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. A cup of cold water given in the name of Jesus will not lose its reward. Well, the devil heard me preach the first message this morning in the early service, and he's trying to, he's trying to silence me. <clears throat> but he's gone. He's gone. Everybody say with me, he's gone. He's gone. He gone. All right. Jesus is here. Amen. Amen. Starting this new series, God has been working this in me for several weeks, and it's been percolating there, and I've got to get it out. I got part of it out this morning. There's no way I can preach all of this this morning. It's going to be a series, and actually this message will be two parts because I can't get it all in this morning. So you're in Mark, the first chapter, beginning in verse 9, and the, the, the key verse I want you to see at verse 14 and 15. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom, the good news. That's what gospel means. The good news of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel, believe the good news. Now, I want to talk to you today. The message today is kingdom distinctives. Kingdom distinctives. And we're going to make this a two-part message. This will be part one. Next week will be part two. But let me give you today's big idea before we get started. Most Christians and many Bible teachers either ignore the kingdom or have the wrong conception of it so that the magnitude of Jesus' words lose their impact on the church today. The kingdom is spoken of so many times by Jesus and the apostles in the New Testament that to overlook it or ignore it would be spiritual blindness at the least and heresy if done intentionally. In this sermon series, we will probe into the meaning and message of the kingdom of God. Today, we will discover the first three kingdom distinctives. If you want to hear it, say amen. amen. This is so important, so vitally important, and so misunderstood, I believe, that I must preach it, and I must preach it in power. So you pray that the Lord will open my mouth in such a way that I will preach for his glory. There's some familiar terms in the New Testament that you read. If you read the New Testament, you can't miss these things. He talks about the kingdom. He talks about the kingdom of God. He talks about the kingdom of his dear son. He talks about God's kingdom. He talks about my father's kingdom. He talks about his kingdom. He talks about the gospel of the kingdom, and he talks about the kingdom of heaven. Now, we have just looked over those things, I believe. But there, it's so many, so many times. Actually, listen to this. 322 times in the New Testament, the kingdom is talked about in these terms. Now, there's there's another kingdom that's talked about, but it's the kingdom of darkness. But the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God's dear son, the kingdom of, uh, of God, the kingdom of heaven, it's mentioned 322 times. Yet we, we look at it and we kind of skip over that. We think it means something else than what it actually means. But I'm, I'm of this opinion. I've said this before, and I, and I mean this with all of my heart. I am tired of reading what I believe. I want to start believing what I read. Now, there's a difference. Reading what I believe is I come to the Scripture and I see something, and, and through my rose-colored glasses, I'm... I'm looking at it in the way that I, have, I believe or I have been taught. But I want to read it, and I want to believe it as it's said in the Word of God. 
This idea of, of, of the kingdom is, is really so, it's, it's just woven into all of the gospels and all that Jesus preached and the apostles preached that it's hard to overlook. You know, what I was taught about the kingdom of God. In Bible college, I took a, I took a course and, and, and they taught all, the, and, and you know, men that I trusted. I even wrote a, a thesis on the kingdom of God and got an A for it. And the reason I did was because I, I, I went right along with what the, the professor had taught, but there was so much of it that just didn't line up. It just didn't make sense. It just didn't fit with what the Word of God was teaching. Let me tell you what the kingdom of God is not. The kingdom of God is not heaven. We read that and we say, well, it's heaven. No, just because it says the kingdom of heaven doesn't mean that it's heaven. It's the kingdom from heaven. And we'll explain that in a moment. Number two, it's, it's not the organized church. Did you hear me say organized? It's not the organized church. I truly believe that we have programized and socialized and every other eyes that you can imagine trying to replace the kingdom of God. Because we, we're not seeing it, we try to do something to bring it about. That's not what the Bible is teaching. It's not the organized church. Also, it's not something meant for a later time. You know, you, many people read the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, and they believe that that's somewhere out in the distance. That's when Jesus comes again. Now, I will, I will admit that the fulfillment of the kingdom of God is when Jesus comes and sits on the throne there in, in Jerusalem. But that's not all of it, and you'll see that as we get through this. That's not it at all. That's just the fulfillment of it. Also, it's not the ecclesiastical rule over men. There are denominations that feel like that they are ruling over a big part of the world. Therefore, that's the kingdom of God. It's not. Matter of fact, it's far from it. So what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? Well, it is something that the Old Testament saints waited for. The Old Testament saints were looking for this. They were looking for the kingdom. Turn in your Bible, if you would, to Luke, the 23rd chapter. We're going to turn to a lot of places. But I have to, I have to do the groundwork first because of our thinking. Our thinking is through these glasses that is really not correct. It's something that the Old Testament saints waited for. Luke, the 23rd chapter, verse 50 and 51. When you get that, say, got it. got it. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel of the deed of them, those that had condemned Jesus. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This is something that and I could carry in the Old Testament and show you how they were longing and looking for the kingdom of God to come. And even though they had a kingdom, even though Israel had a kingdom and had a king, they were longing for this thing called the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what it is. It is when and where, when and where, heaven, with its powers and standards, come down to earth and has rule and authority. Amen. You know the Lord's Prayer? 
which is actually the disciples' prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer, but Jesus said, pray after this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our prayer is to be, God, bring your kingdom down. Let your will be done down here, just like it is there in heaven. How many of you know that the will of God is always done in heaven? It is when and where heaven with all of its power and standards come down to earth and has rule and authority. Now, folks, I don't know if you've been watching or listening uh, to this revival that's breaking out. One, it's, it started there in Asbury College, a little small college there in Kentucky, in a small auditorium at a chapel service. It wasn't planned. They didn't plan it. They didn't prepare for it. All of a sudden, God shows up. And, and revival breaks out. It has spread to other college campuses. It has spread even to Samford University over here where God has shown up and people come in. I don't know if you, if you watched the live stream of this or read anything about it, but people will come in. There's no, there's no hype. There's, there's no preaching. There's, there's no, none of that that you would think that would accompany a revival, but people are just praising the Lord. They're praying. They're confessing their sins. People come from all over the world to see what's going on there. And they come in the door and the presence of God hits them and they fall on their face and confess their sins. Now listen to me. That's how it should be. That's how it should be all the time. When God comes down, when heaven comes with all power and authority, that's what Jesus told us to pray for. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. The kingdom what I'm talking about. And there is some kingdom distinctives that we need to understand. Let me give you the three distinct qualities of the kingdom. Are you ready for it? Say amen. amen. Number one, I want to give you the unique character of the kingdom. The unique character of the kingdom. It was distinctly separate from worldly kingdoms and even from the kingdom of God under Israel's kings. It's distinctly different. Jesus said, hey, kingdom of God's coming. As a matter of fact, it's, it's right on you. It's at hand. So it wasn't what was in the Old Testament. And you know, Jesus talked about the Old Testament, but only when people... Ask him questions about it. But the rest of the time, he did something else. And we're going to show you what else he did. Look what he did. It was what Jesus preached and taught to his disciples. Let me say that again. The kingdom is what Jesus preached and taught to his disciples. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew. We're going to keep you in Matthew for the, a lot of the time here so you won't have to be turning... A lot in your scripture but let me assure you that what you read in Matthew is, is is said also in the other scriptures in the other Gospels if you will Matthew chapter 4 Matthew chapter 4 verse verse 12 well we just read in Mark where where Jesus preached he began there to preaching the gospel of the kingdom 
But look at chapter 4 of Matthew, verse 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zabulon and Nephilim, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Look at verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what Jesus preached. Look, at, You're there in Matthew chapter 4. Look at verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Are you there at verse 23? Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Now, a little later on in his ministry, look at verse, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Look at that. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. <clears throat> And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching what? The gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Wow. He preached the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. Somebody said, no, he's preaching the gospel. He's preaching his death, burial, and resurrection. No, he wasn't. We think gospel means death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And it is good news. But that word is just simply good news. The good news. He wasn't preaching his death, burial, and resurrection because he was still walking around with them. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. And we're going to explain what that is all about in just a moment. Wow. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 13. Is this what Jesus preached? Did he really teach them and preach, preach to them about the gospel of the kingdom? Yes. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to what? The kingdom of God. This is after his resurrection. He's talking to them about the kingdom of God. And then Matthew chapter 24. Turn there. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. I want your faith to be in what the Word of God says, not what Brother Gerald says. I want you to understand what the Word of God says. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. You, you recognize Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is talking about the end times. But look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom, which gospel of the kingdom? The one he'd been preaching. He said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Hmm. Wow. Not only is it what Jesus preached, it's what the apostles preached. Look, if you would, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 8. Matthew 10, 5 through 8. If you're there, say amen. amen. Verse 5, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, or into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, 
freely ye have received, freely give. He commanded them to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Luke chapter 9, and turn there if you would. Luke chapter 9, verse 59 through 62. Luke 9, 59. This is, this is those that came to follow him, and they, they said, we'll follow you, we'll follow you. Verse, 30, verse 59, rather. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You let the dead bury the dead, but you go preach the kingdom of God. Somebody said, I've never seen this before, Brother Joe. Well, I hadn't either until God started pressing this upon me. This is, this, this, this is, this is the word of God. Acts chapter 8. Turn there if you will. Yes, the apostles preach this. The disciples preach this. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning what? The kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Now turn to Acts 19. Yes, Brother Gerald, I know, that, I know that during Jesus' life they preached the kingdom. Yes, you've established that. Well, Philip is after that. He's talking about the kingdom of God. But what about Paul? Look at Acts 19, verse 6. This is Paul at Ephesus. He goes and he's, he's amazed that they hadn't received the Holy Ghost. Verse 6, Acts 19, 6. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Then turn over... the. To the next chapter, Acts 20, verse 25. This is Paul at Miletus. He, he was there and, and all the elders gathered around him to see him one more time. In Acts 20, verse 25, he says, And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching, what? The kingdom of God shall see my face no more. He just says, I've gone among you preaching the kingdom of God, and I know you're not going to see me anymore. And they wept, and they cried, and they sent him away. And then Acts 28, verse 23, this is Paul at Rome. He's at Rome. He's close to the end of his ministry. He's, he, he's, he's on a missionary journey, but he ends up in prison in Rome. But he's at Rome, and they... All the, the believers in Rome wanted to see him, and they, they got together and had him at one spot. Acts 28, verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, they came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified, what? The kingdom of God persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. Must have been pretty important, the kingdom of God. Then look at Acts 28, verse 30 through 31. This is Paul in prison. He's in prison at Rome. But they allowed him to have his own place with a guard. Look at verse 30, Acts 28, verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching what? The kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. 
It is something that Jesus preached. It is something that the apostles preached. I believe it's something that we need to preach. Now, first of all, now I have given you the unique character of the kingdom. Secondly, I want to give you the unlimited power of the kingdom. The unlimited power of the kingdom. Now, this is hard for some of you to understand and hard for some to grasp. We don't see power today like this. But you know, the, the theologians call what we're in right now the mystery form of the kingdom. It wasn't any mystery to the early church. Man, they just they saw the power fall all the time. Peter preached on the day of Pentecost after the kingdom came in. By the way, Jesus said, there's some of you standing here. He's talking to his, his, his disciples. He said, there's some of you standing here that will not taste death until you see the kingdom of God come in power. Now, they didn't live until his second coming. Amen? They saw that come in. Amen. The unlimited power of the kingdom. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Now we don't we don't we don't have to we don't have to tell you and show you all the things that went on in the early church after the day of Pentecost. Do you know that that's that's things that ought to be happening all the time? When heaven comes down. with all power and all authority to the earth. That ought to be happening. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Are you there? Say amen. amen. And I say unto you that thou art Peter. You'll recognize this as, as Peter's confession that Jesus, you are Lord, you're God. You are the Son of the living God. And then Jesus turns to Peter, verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's some pretty awesome power. And Jesus said, I'm giving you these keys of the kingdom. Now he says this here, binding and loosing. But he says, I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. He says this in another spot where he, he says, if, if your brother has, has offended you, done wrong, go to him. And if he hears you, good. But if he doesn't hear you, take him to the church. And if he doesn't hear the church, treat him like a heathen. And he said, you have power to bind and loose. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's two times Jesus says binding and loosing. No, only two times. But it is power of the kingdom. And then Luke, the 24th chapter. Turn there if you would. Luke chapter 24, verse 46. You'll recognize this as, as Luke's part of the Great Commission. Luke 24, verse 46. And Jesus said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Until ye be endued with power from on high. He's talking about kingdom stuff here. How do you know he's talking about kingdom stuff, Brother Gerald? This, this is a, a kingdom phrase here, endued with power. Any king, any 
regent of that king had something, something called an endowment service upon him where everyone was gathered together and there was a robe put around him. And he was endued from that point with power, with authority. Everyone knew about the endowment service of a king. And Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem. Repentance has got to be preached. And forgiveness of sins has got to be preached. But wait until you're being endued with power from on high. Until you have your endowment service. Until you're a, a, a vice regent of the king. And you are robed with that. Now what is that power from on high? I believe with all of my heart Jesus was talking about the ability to bring about conviction of sins by the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe that that, that, that meant that when they received this power, and of course Jesus said in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. Now, now, now listen to me. All the great revivals that I've studied, all, all the great awakenings and great moves of God throughout history has been just the same as this. The power of God comes down and is manifested not in, in acts or works or any of those kind of things, but the presence of God sits upon a place or upon a region or upon a country or upon a city, and everyone feels the presence of heaven coming down. It's what Jesus told us to pray for. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when that happens, you know, they, they're having such great revival. I want it here. I want God to show up here. I want him to show up in, in, in our house, in our city, in our schools. Somebody told me yesterday, yeah, it's happening with those college students, and man, they need revival. You need it more. You know why? You've lived longer. Than they They're just beginning on their journey. They, they haven't had the time to sin like you have. Hello? <laughs> or me. I need revival. You need revival. Well, yeah, those, those people in Washington, they need revival. Hey, we need revival from the White House to the schoolhouse to your house. We need for God to come and do a great work. And when he does, when heaven comes down, listen to me, when the kingdom of God is manifested, and it needs to be preached. I need to preach it. You need to preach it. We all need to preach it. The kingdom of God coming down. When he does with all his power and his authority, I'm telling you what, there will be no question about is this God or not. They, they were, some were criticizing this revival at Asbury College and they, they, they said, well, you know, it's just emotion. It's just, it's just college students getting emotional. Well, the, the dean of Southern Seminary in Louisville, a man who I greatly respect, he went over he said, I'm going to go see. He went over there and he went to the service and he came back and he wrote this. He said, you go over there, you'll get emotional too. He said, because this is a move of God. When God shows up, you don't have to say, well, I wonder if that was God. Listen to me. Listen, we're to pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When God shows up, let me tell you something, you'll never be the same. I want that. 
in our day. I want that in this place. Do you want that? I'm telling you, there's nothing like the presence and the power of God. I've talked to you about the unique character of the kingdom and the unlimited power of the kingdom. I want to talk to you about the urgent message of the kingdom. This is, this is three distinct qualities. It was urgent. Jesus began preaching. What did he begin preaching? He said, the time's fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's at hand. It's now, he was saying. It's coming. Oh, I, I, love, I love the place where, where, where they, they accused Jesus of casting out Beelzebub, prince of devils. You remember that story? And Jesus said, well, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Satan is not going to cast out Satan. He said, but if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, you know that the kingdom of God is on you. Amen? How do we know about the kingdom? There's unlimited power, but there's an urgent message. Jesus said, since John... The Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is trying to press in. He said, there's many trying to press into the kingdom of God. But I remind you of what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven he said you must be born again and then he said unless you're born of water and of the spirit you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven I want to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven don't you Oh, yes, Brother Gerald, we'll go there, we'll go there. He wasn't talking about heaven when he talked about the kingdom of heaven. He was talking about heaven coming down here. The urgent message was it's, it's here. He said, many are pressing into it. Some go the broad way, some go the narrow way, but press into the kingdom of heaven. He said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. For it's better for you to enter into the kingdom of heaven, that's what he said, than to enter into hell with two eyes. It's better for you to enter blind into the kingdom of heaven. Now listen, listen to me. There's another urgent message Jesus says it the disciples say it we say it repent repent somebody said brother Jerry we're in the age of grace we don't need to repent I beg your pardon you still are under the hand of a mighty God who is holy who is powerful who is righteous, who knows everything, who made everything. And he says, repent. I need to repent. Say that with me. I need to repent. Say it again. I need to repent. I'm going to cast that lying spirit out of the rest of you. I need to repent. Let me tell you what repentance is. Here's repentance. You're going in a certain direction. And you're just happy going along. And suddenly something stops you, gets your attention, moves upon your heart, and you turn around to find out what that is back there. Then you start going toward that thing. 
and you're going toward God and you're repenting. Could I say to you, Jesus said, we worry about everything. We worry about money. We worry about where we're going. We worry about what we're going to eat when we get out of here. And Jesus said, seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Man, I'm going after all kind of stuff. I'm just I'm going. Heaven comes down. I say, wait a minute. I need to go after the kingdom of God. I need to repent. I need to preach the kingdom of God. Oh, my friend. There's nothing, nothing, nothing in this world that can compare to the presence of heaven on you right now. My question to you is, is not do you want the presence of God, not do you want the kingdom of God in your home, in your life, in your church, in your work, in your body, and not do you want it. I know you do. The question is, will you press toward it? Will you seek that? And I'm telling you what, when we start seeking, Brother Johnny, when we start seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you won't be able to get rid of it. You won't be able to pull out of it. I'm telling you what, those, these revival services that we're talking about, these, there's, I call them services, they're, they're revivals. At Asbury, at Sanford, hey, it's 24 hours a day. They can't run them out. They can't get them out of there. they got to stay there in the presence of God. And that's the way that it is. Well, I don't understand that, Brother Gerald. No, you don't. But I'd like for you to. Oh, listen, that presence of God. Will you press toward it? The question is, will you repent and go toward that? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent.